No grain, no pain is, it's all about the health epidemic that we face in the United States. Autoimmune disease, is, this is one of the biggest myths that, that, that people believe is, is that heart disease and cancer kill more people. But the reality is that autoimmune disease actually kills more people. There are 46 million people with autoimmune disease. And statistically speaking, those with autoimmunity are gonna die 20 years younger. Statistically speaking, those with autoimmune disease are gonna have a much, much poorer quality of life as they get past the fourth decade. So their lifespan is shortened and their quality of life is dramatically reduced. They're on an average of five or more medications. And, and there's just no end or solution in sight. Uh, mainstream medicine, with all its valiant efforts at doing the right thing, has, has really created a scenario that just doesn't work. They've created a, a, a paradigm that doesn't work. If it worked, we'd have people with less autoimmune disease. We'd have people that didn't have as much pain. We'd have less people in pain, and we just don't have those things. So we have to analyze what, what we're currently doing, and we have to say, is this working or is it not working? And I think, I think the answer to that question is, is pretty obvious. It's in the outcome. And the outcome is we have more autoimmune disease today than we've ever had. We have more chronic pain today than we've ever had. 100 million Americans suffer with some form of chronic pain. The CDC announced a very, very strong warning. This is the first time they've done this. They've, they announced a guideline and a warning to say, doctors shouldn't be prescribing prescription opiates because the drugs kill more people and provide less benefit. So in essence, this is, this is kind of an, an unprecedented thing where, where you know, our governing bodies that are supposed to protect us have come out and finally said, the drugs kill more people. There's about 16,000 deaths a year from prescription opiates. Beyond that, we've got an epidemic of people being addicted to them. So not only do they kill, do they have the potential to kill, but they have a huge potential for addiction and, and wrecking the quality of life in a different way altogether. And then we have this other model. So we've got prescription opiates that are, are used to treat chronic pain for a vast majority of, of people that have it. But then we have this other side to pain medication, and that's using a class of medication called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, oftentimes shortened as NSAIDs. And NSAIDs like ibuprofen and aspirin and naproxen and Mobic and Celebrex, these medications, they block inflammation and therefore they help to reduce pain. But, but one of the fundamental problems with these drugs is they cause an increased risk for heart disease, which is arguably one of the top killers in the United States. And, but one of the other problems with these medications is they actually erode the stomach and the intestinal lining. So you take that person who, you know, maybe they've got a knee pain or a shoulder problem. Maybe they've, they've, they've always kind of dealt with it by popping an aspirin or popping an ibuprofen. And they've done it for 5, 10, 15 years. And then they end up with gastrointestinal problems, heartburn, esophageal reflux disease, because the, over time, the medication erodes the lining of their gut and erodes the lining of their stomach, making those tissues more susceptible to damage. And so now we have another drug that comes into the equation. Now the doctor says, oh, you're having heartburn. You've been taking pain medications. You've got heartburn now. Let's put you on an antiacid. And then the problem with antiacids is they increase your risk of infection. They block magnesium and they block vitamin B12 and they block calcium and iron absorption. So we do that for a few years and now we have somebody who ends up severely malnourished. They may be eating enough of the nutrients, but their, their bodies just aren't capable of absorbing the nutrients because of the medication side effects. And the side effects from being nutritionally devoid or having nutritional deficit, for many of those, the B12 deficiency causes neuropathic pain. So it can cause nerve pain, which is a form of chronic pain. So here we're back in this vicious circle where we started with pain. We treated pain. The treatment of pain led to another side effect, which then led to another medication, which then led to a nutritional deficit that subsequently caused a different new kind of pain, which now requires another pain medication. So at what point do we really, do we really step back from this and, and look at it from a 10,000 foot view and really analyze it and say, this isn't the right move, this isn't the right, this isn't the right step. Because with anyone with chronic pain, there is no artificial chemical manipulation that we can do or prescribe as doctors that's going to bring about a resolution in why that pain is there. I think that's where we start from a fundamental perspective is why is the pain there in the first place? And if we understand what that is, then the medications become very, very unnecessary. And I think if we look at this honestly, 
There's a lot of people that don't want that. There's a lot of politicians, there's a lot of drug companies and manufacturers, there's a lot of doctors, a lot of hospital systems that just don't want that answer. They don't want that solution. It's a conflict of interest for their bottom line. And that's not to say that, that all of those entities are just out to make money or out there to be malicious. I, I think the system is what the system is, but at the same time, we can't keep going the way that we're going. So we have to look at this differently and we have to come back and say, if we're going to treat chronic pain, if we're going to treat autoimmune disease meaningfully, we have to look at where it comes from. One of the reasons I started the No Grain, No Pain initiative and one of the reasons why I wrote No Grain, No Pain was to answer these questions. My experience is I've, I've been practicing clinically for 15 years. I started in rheumatology at the VA hospital in Houston. And uh, what I saw time and time again, what I saw over and over again, uh, were patients that came through the door that never got better. My attending physician at the time, he was, uh, he, was a, he was a really nice guy, really smart guy, but he was a very, also a very bitter guy. And I think one of the reasons why is he, he was treating people consistently without results. Now you could imagine in your job, if every day you went to work and it didn't matter and what you did didn't help anybody out, didn't achieve a greater result, didn't, didn't really accomplish anything, how miserable your life might become and, and your self sense of purpose might become. And I, and I think that's where a lot of doctors fall today in this paradigm is there, is there, again, they're using these medications, these medications aren't working, their patients aren't getting better and these doctors are just stuck in this ride. So I saw that early on. I was very blessed and very fortunate to see that when I trained in the VA hospital. And so, you know, I, I was in a quick hurry to get out of there and start doing things my own way. And uh, one of the first things that, that we stumbled across was diet, right? Diet as, as an approach to treat pain. Because one of the things that we knew from the medical literature at the time was that fasting could resolve chronic pain within two days. Because you take a person and you take away their food. And that's all you do, you take away food. And, and a lot of them, their pain would go away within two days. It's well studied, well researched. We knew that to be the case. So you take the next step, which is which food, right? And then you start kind of reverse engineering that process. And that's what, no grain, no pain. It's the culmination of 15 years of which food, which environmental chemical. What is it that the person in chronic pain is doing to themselves that if they knew they could change, would bring about a resolution of pain, would bring about a reduction in inflammation, would bring about a meaningful change in the nature of the way they feel, and a long-lasting recovery, as opposed to a chronic dependency upon a medical system and upon medication that it doesn't have a fruitful ending.